Ashes of Creation slowed things down a bit for us this month, giving us a shorter stream showcasing the updated skybox, the wand skill tree, and a bit of the updates made to the mage archetype, while still managing to get us pretty hyped for what comes next. And while this stream was low on the bar compared to what they've shown us previously this year, it was still interesting to see while also giving us some clarity on what is happening with Alpha 2. Starting with the fact that creative director Steven Sharif did confirm that Ashes of Creation's Alpha 2 is still on track for quarter three. We are still on schedule for the, for that um, for that day. <clears throat> Not only that, but he informed us that Intrepid is currently working towards completing Milestone 9, which is having Alpha 2's launch content ready to go. Once that is done and everything is launch ready that they see fit, then we move into Milestone 10, which seems to be a big focus on polish and bug fixing. This is very interesting to say the least because it pretty much allows us to narrow down which month in quarter three we can expect Alpha 2. Although this is merely speculation, each of Intrepid's milestones seem to go for roughly eight to 10 weeks. We know that milestone eight ended about three weeks ago when Steven tweeted it out on April 10th, which based on this timeline puts milestone nine ending in early to mid June and milestone 10 ending in late July to early August, which is in fact the second month of quarter three and what I am predicting to be the Alpha 2 starting month now. Again, this is just going off the information we've had in the past for Milestones, and this may not be completely accurate, and you also have to keep in mind that they're still in a pre-alpha testing state, and things could go wrong, things could get pushed back, it happens in game development all the time, so nothing is set in stone. Steven also talked a bit about the content in Alpha 2 and reminded us all that it will be a very long test and that they plan to introduce large content patches through the testing phase with things like Alpha Patch 2.1 and 2.2 and so on, which will include things like PvP seasons where the scoreboards get reset and it's a clean slate for everybody, and the goal is for each of these PvP seasons to be about 6 months, but potentially shorter. And if we're having PvP seasons last 6 months each in Alpha 2, it kind of gives you you a better idea of the fact that, well, Alpha 2 will probably run for more than a year, if not two, which is something that a lot of us had anticipated anyways. So if you're impatiently waiting to play Ashes of Creation on launch, well, you should probably find something else to play for now. When it comes to what you can expect as an actual tester, though, while Steven has stated this before, he did give us a good reminder in the stream. This is not an Eastern port over for localization of a completed game that many of us have experienced in MMO land. This is a true alpha. There will be lots of bugs. There will be potential wipes. There will be content that is not finished. There will be things that when you are playing may not be fun because of that. Obviously, the goal is that our core systems and the experience is going to be an enjoyable one but you are not playing a game, a finished game at that point. You are literally playing a true alpha. Diving into the actual gameplay for the first time in two years, we once again see the Sand Squall Desert in actual gameplay. Not a ton of it, just a brief glimpse of an area filled with what I'm hoping are placeholder minotaurs, because as much as I love minotaurs, I'm hoping for a much wider variety of NPC mobs heading into a new biome compared to what we have seen a hundred times in the Riverlands. But Alpha is Alpha, so I'm sure if these are placeholders, it will come down the road, and if they are not placeholders, I would expect there's probably a good lore reason why they are also moving their way into the Sand Squall Desert. You will notice right off the bat, if you watch the 4K video, that lighting has undergone some significant changes. If you've only watched it live, well go back watch that 4k video because for this stream it's a massive difference to the point where I barely noticed the lighting changes watching it live and it took me going back to rewatch it to be like wow this is a pretty good improvement compared to what we've had in the past, even though I still think nighttime needs to be a bit darker. With this lighting comes an updated skybox where it has been updated to rotate around the world map to tie into Intrepid's constellation system that was teased a while back. Along this you can see the clouds moving in the night sky, a broken moon that seems to pulse every so often, along with some massive still intact moons lighting up the Sand Squall Desert. When we hit the mage though, well, I was a bit disappointed to see that the mage VFX did not reflect off the environment, but Steven did address this saying that in the future some abilities will, but it's something that is very taxing on performance, so we may not see them all do this. And also you gotta keep in mind that lighting is a work in progress,
progress and it's not in a 100% state. It is something that they're continuing to work towards, they're continuing to approve on, and they're gonna keep doing it until they get it right. But lighting aside, the updated Mage Fireball and the Lightning Ball looks great, although the size of the Ball of Lightning is still concerning to me with how it will look when you have several mages in a raid casting it at the same time. We also saw some Wand Skill Tree, which is the most in-depth weapon tree we have seen yet, allowing you to really change up your playstyle, and it'll be very interesting to try and find the right mix between weapon skill trees and class specs, and I imagine something you're going to want to switch between a good amount of the time. Jumping around from more specialized in AoE to what we saw in the showcase with beam lights or other types of specs depending on the weapon, it'll be a very fun and interesting way to build characters and make them a bit more your own with the intense amount of customization that Ashes of Creation is offering. But this stream is just the calm before the storm compared to the massive system Intrepid plans to reveal next month, which Steven said at the end of this stream would be Node Wars, where we will hopefully see the process of sieging a node and perhaps Intrepid will finally let us Alpha 1 testers in to help out. Because you know, wars are meant to be massive, and the best way to get a massive amount of players on the screen would be to invite some more. And to follow up the war stream, we should be seeing the Bard Showcase in the next couple months as well. Overall, while I was a bit unimpressed by the main video segment of the stream compared to months past, the bits of information dropped throughout, including confirming Quarter 3 is still on track, made me pretty hyped especially when there's been a lot of doubt around whether or not Intrepid can actually hit that major Alpha 2 milestone.